An official from Japan's nuclear safety agency says a fuel meltdown at Fukushima Daiichi No. 1 reactor will have an impact on how the crisis is controlled. Hidehiko Nishiyama says filling the reactor's containment vessel with water may not be worth it. Nishiyama says the melted rods at the bottom of the number one reactor are being cooled by a small amount of water. He doubts it's necessary to flood the containment vessel entirely, something Tokyo Electric Power Company has been trying to do. It may not be necessary to flood the containment vessel entirely. Even though there is not much water inside the reactor, the fuel rods are cooling down. TEPCO officials said Thursday most of the fuel rods in Reactor 1 are believed to have melted and sunk to the bottom of its pressure vessel. They said the melted fuel has apparently cooled, even though much of the water they've injected is leaking through holes at the bottom of the vessel. I see you don't fancy my suggestions. Well, you're not serious, are you? The utility devised a plan last month to fill up the containment vessel with water and set up a system to circulate the water through a heat exchanger. Nishiyama said TEPCO only needs to put in enough water so the system works. He expects the utility will likely change its strategy and inject water to the minimum level. Tokyo Electric Power Company is preparing to cover the damaged number one reactor building at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. It aims to reduce the amount of radioactive substances escaping into the air. TEPCO is working to reduce emissions of radioactivity while cooling the reactors. It's been clearing radioactive rubble and spraying a chemical hardening agent to stop radioactive dust from spreading. TEPCO is going to completely cover the number one reactor building, which lost its roof in a hydrogen explosion in March. On Friday, workers cleared rubble so a crane can be set up near the building. TEPCO says a polyester sheet will be attached to a steel frame enclosing the 50-meter tall building. It says the cover will withstand strong winds. Why is the world jam-packed with such idiots? The company also says it will install a ventilator with a filter to capture radioactive substances that would otherwise be concentrated inside the cover. TEPCO plans to keep workers' radiation exposure to a minimum by partly assembling the steel frame before taking it to the site. Does it work? No idea. It's probably junk. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, is being forced to review its procedures to bring the nuclear crisis under control after finding that the number one reactor at its Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant appears to be in a state of meltdown. Under its plan, TEPCO was to fill the number one reactor containment vessel with water to restore reactor cooling functions. It also planned to install a circulating cooling system, which uses a heat exchanger. Work is underway to bring part of the heat exchanger into the complex on Friday. But water cannot be sent to a heat exchanger unless the water level in a containment vessel reaches about 5 meters. TEPCO says it does not know the water levels in the containment vessel now, adding that it hopes to quickly find out. Your Honor, may I object from here? The meltdown is big enough a factor that would require a review in TEPCO's schedule for bringing the plant under control. Well, I'll tell you what happened. I just ran out of bullshit. The revised plan is due to be released on Tuesday next week. Nobody in advertising wants to get rid of boils, Julia. They're good little money spinners. All we want to do is offer hope of getting rid of them. Japan is facing yet another concern about its food because of the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. 
Radioactive substances above the legal limit have been detected in tea leaves harvested in Kanagawa Prefecture, south of Tokyo. The prefectural government is checking samples that come from 15 municipalities. It follows the discovery on Monday of 570 becquerels of radioactive cesium per kilogram of tea leaves grown in Minami Ashigara City. The national limit is 500 becquerels. Officials say radioactive cesium above the safety standard has been detected in five samples. The highest readings were 780 becquerels in Odawara City, 740 becquerels in Kiyokawa Village, 680 becquerels in Yugawara Town, 670 becquerels in Aikawa Town, and 530 becquerels in Manazuru Town. The Kanagawa Prefectural Government has asked the five municipalities and the local farmers association to voluntarily halt shipments of the tea leaves for the time being. Panicking. We never practice panicking. We practice going out neatly. Pardon me, fire. Look out. Pardon me, fire. Fire. Yes, pardon me, fire. We never do that. I don't know why we practice so much. It says it will repeat the tests in these towns and villages when tea leaves are harvested next month. The Japanese government has officially decided on a framework for helping Tokyo Electric Power Company pay compensation for the nuclear emergency at its Fukushima Daiichi plant. Under the framework decided on Friday, a new state-backed institution will be set up to facilitate payments to those affected. The new body would receive financial contributions from electric power companies that own nuclear power plants in Japan. The government will inject public funds by allocating to the institution a special type of bond that can be cashed whenever necessary. The new body would annually return a certain amount of money from TEPCO to the state coffers. The framework also says the government will back up TEPCO if a stable power supply is threatened. The government must pass necessary legislation in the Diet to realize this framework. But the process is expected to face rough going. The total size of compensation is not yet known, and concerns have been raised that the plan could lead to utilities passing on costs to consumers through higher power bills. No shit. Well, NHK has interviewed Daniel Poneman, Deputy Secretary of the U.S. Department of Energy. Poneman has been deeply involved in U.S.-Japan cooperation in the wake of the accident at the Fukushima plant. He says the U.S. will continue to help Japan deal with the problem and express hope that Japan will promptly ratify an international convention on the compensation of nuclear accidents. NHK World today, Ko Sakurai has more on this. Hi. Good to see you again. Hey, How have you been? Thank you. Thank you for having me. told NHK on Thursday that the United States has been in close contact with Japan since immediately after the accident in Fukushima. He stressed that the U.S. will continue supporting Japan. We're going to uh, be continuing our consultations here uh, over the next several months and hopefully bring the uh, situation into a more stable uh, framework and allow uh, the uh, situation to res resolve in that direction. This little girl here who finds a dead squirrel. All right. Hey, what is that you have there, Thea? A squirrel. It's dead. You have a dead squirrel, huh? Uh-huh. Whee! <laughs> Huh. Poneman said the U.S. will work together with Japan to dispose huge quantities of radioactive water and stabilize the storage pools for spent fuel rods over the long term. Poneman admitted that there were differences of opinion between Japan and the U.S. right after the accident over issues such as whether there was still water in the number four reactor storage pool. He suggested that the U.S. could have made a bigger contribution if it had quicker access to more data. There was a lot of confusion in those early days on what the genuine facts are on the ground. I think anything that would have given us more data sooner would have been something that we could have perhaps incorporated into our responses. The way she says squirrel, a squirrel. is so freaking adorable, but like the way she moves the dead squirrel's head around like a freaking puppet is also a bit creepy. Poneman also said even before the quake on March 11th, the U.S. had urged Japan on multiple occasions to join the Convention on Supplementary Compensation, or CSC. 
the CSC would make possible the payment of compensation from a joint fund of signatory states if damage from a serious nuclear accident exceeds the amount covered by domestic law. He said the U.S. looks forward to Japan ratifying the convention. I think it would be a great thing uh, and would show real leadership if Japan were to ratify uh, the CSC because then it would show that the efforts that are made by private industry uh, to, to notwithstanding uh, any uh, commercial motive to get into the opportunity to try to help relieve a safety crisis would not somehow subsequently be penalized because they are lacking in the basic legal protections for liability that any uh, country should offer the countries and in, in, uh, the companies that are working in their jurisdictions. I gotta tell you the truth. When it comes to bullshit, big time major league bullshit, you have to stand in awe. Ask if the accident in Japan would affect U.S. nuclear policy. Ponemon said President Obama's administration remains unchanged in continuing to view nuclear energy as an important part of the U.S. energy portfolio. Thank you very much, everybody. He stressed, however, that the government will draw lessons from Japan to obtain public support for its policy. Thank you very much, everybody.